Okay, guys, we are live. Uh, so for those listening at home, welcome to the Dungeon Musings YouTube channel. My name is Kevin Madison, and I will be your friendly Dungeon Master this evening. Actually, I won't be your Dungeon Master. I'll be your friendly Roll Master this evening, because tonight we are carrying on with our October uh, adventure or mini campaign playing Iron Crown Enterprises uh, Classic Roll Master 2nd Edition, also known as Roll Master Classic Fantasy RPG. Um, this is a series of adventures or series of sessions we're calling Heirs of Sea and Sorrow. And um, this is, these series of, of um, sessions as well, too, I will say, are uh, dedicated to the memory uh, and the contribution uh, that uh, Terry K. Amthor, the creator of uh, Shadow World and uh, the setting of Jamin, uh, Land of Twilight that we're playing in, who had uh, passed away uh, quite recently. Oh, we got Steve-O in here as well. Um, I'm going to go through the order I've got you guys on the screen here. Let me, uh, oh, here we go. Let me get Steve-O in here. Okay, um, you guys may have, uh, you may still be receiving uh, audio through Roll20, because uh, this is a new game. Like, so I'm hearing a little bit of feedback. Yeah, you have to, yeah, you have to set your to thing to video only every single time. Yeah, every time there's a new game. Here we go. Usually there's a colored thing in Roll20 around who that's from. And yeah. I don't see it. I don't see it right now. Um, Anyway, so the um, the so let me uh, introduce you to the stars of the Heirs of Sea and Sorrow uh, campaign. I'll, I'll go the order I've got you guys on the screen here. Why don't you tell us who you are, who you're playing, and um, yeah, that's uh, I guess it, uh, <laughs> I guess it. You're all the same level. So first up, we've got uh, Will. Hi, I'm Will. I'm playing Nimrice, who is a half elf, uh, fifth level animist. So, um, yeah, I'm here for uh, turning into wolves and such. <laughs> nice. Very nice. Uh, next up is Jeffrey. Hey, everybody. I'm Jeff, and I'm playing Jawar, who is a human warrior monk. Nice. Uh, next up is John. Hey, everyone. I'm John. I'm playing a character known as Zart Ordok. He is a uh, half-elven... Uh, what would you call him? A... Uh, not a night blade, but uh, he's an el element essence user and mystic. Yeah, he's a mystic. Mystic. So, so he's a hybrid. Uh, we were talking before we went live that uh, the in uh, Rollmaster uh, spellcasters draw on one uh, or more uh, realms of power. Power is generally divided into three different. Uh, realms of power, essence, channeling, and mentalism. Uh, pure caster like them, Rice draws on only one of those realms. Uh, Zartor Dak, uh, being a mystic, draws on two essence and uh, mentalism. Yes, he is a seeker of uh, secrets and uh, also a uh, shapeshifter. Nice. Um, and then. Yeah. <laughs> Last but certainly not least is Steve O. Good evening, hello, it is I, and I'm playing a new character tonight, and it is none other than another bard, uh, Bow Down the Bold, and he is fifth level, and he is also an actor part-time. Nice. <laughs> there you go. Modeled after someone I know, I guess. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, guys, um, the uh, we had our first session uh, on Friday um, that involved a... Well, a planned reunion, and then there were uh, some events in town. What happened last time, guys? Well, we had a pretty good introduction to the setting, thanks to, to Kevin. Well, let me give you um, a, uh, speaking of which, let's take a look at the map now. The names are the names. I colored, I'm in the process of coloring this sucker. Uh, I really hate, the names are very hard to read, uh, on this, unless you zoom in, uh, but... I have a color version of our map here now. And this is where our, yeah, where our story will be opening uh, tonight will be in Cloven Bay. But the illustration you guys saw, that tower next to the lake, that is Myrna Doom. That is where all you guys are from up here. Yeah, we started the session with uh, Dave's character. Yep. Um, Sir... Sarah Kira, uh, Kira yep. uh, Ventier, um, meeting her father uh, in their study, for his study. Uh, then they talked briefly about the return of her brother and the two twins, which is 
Zart Ordak and his brother Zart or Kirk. Um, yeah, Kirk. Kirk. And uh, she went out to go meet them in uh, the airship that was bringing us in. And then we shifted to Zordok and Jawar on the airship coming in. We had a brief interaction with the, well, brief, with the, the captain. Learned a bit about uh, Zart's. Yep, Zart uh, Zedek. Uh, learned uh, that uh, Kara's uh, brother did not join us on the return trip. And that's a uh, uh, issue with going to interfere with a lot of plans that uh, they had, and we uh, arrived. We met and greet, and what else? There was a uh, like a half, not a half orc, but a uh, smelly guy. What was his uh, name? Lugroki. Lugroki, yes. Um, it was a half demon, I believe, uh, instead of a half orc, right? Uh, they are, I mean, Stink. half demon in the sense that like, they were bred uh, tens of thousands of years ago. So he would not okay. really, I mean, he'd be no more, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of the, like, it's it's like the um, um, the claims to, uh, you know, uh, Indian status in the U.S. Gotcha. You know, where it's like, you, you know, I've got one twentieth of, like, no, 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 you... Yeah. Well, uh, we met with him. Uh, Sir Sir Kira Ventier uh, came across some dead bodies on her way to the, the town um, that had some kind of weird shuriken embedded in their flesh. Yeah. Um, and uh, she, many ideas around undead came up, but there weren't any signs of them here. But we met with Pig Stink, and he told us a few rumors that were happening about certain activities based on the... Uh, was it the Duke's son? Yeah, the Duke. She told a little bit about uh, the Duke's son. Is uh, so Duke Renovar is the ruler of Cloven Bay. Uh, the Dumas is his son, who's been away for something like fifteen years, squired to a um, oh, this dragon, the noble in Elisa. Yeah. Um, the two things that were uh, important here is you guys heard about the uh, cult of the Sea Drake apparently arriving in town, and. Apparently, some uh, m some merchants or something from the city of Lethes, and Lethes is a is it really the largest trading city in all of uh, the Rakani uh, Empire. All the uh, this is the setting uh, for Will and for Steve to give you guys uh, an idea where we are here. Uh, this is the continent of uh, Jamin. Uh, the continent was dominated by uh, six different uh, at the end of the um, or near the end, I guess halfway through the second age of Ire uh, the six dominant kingdoms here were each awarded three different artifacts uh, by um, the a, a legendary smith named Tethior and uh, the lore masters uh, a secretive order that has sort of woven its way through history since uh, you know, at the end of the first age of Ire um of these six kingdoms that are identified here, there really is only one that remains and still has in the, the uh, crown in its possession. That's the Phoenix Empire of Rakan. Lethys is right around here. And it is, as I said, like the wealthiest and most uh, um, influential uh, city, uh, really, for trading city in all of Jaemon. You guys are right around here. Our map is in this region right here in what was once part of the kingdom uh, or the realm of Ulishak, the realm of the Sea Drake. Each of the different crowns and swords and amulets granted by the uh, Tethior and the others had a different kind of signature animal associated with it. Uh, the Wyvern for Seralus, the Griffin for Zor, the Unicorn for Uralon, the Pegasus for Tanara, the Phoenix for Rakan, and of course the Sea Drake kingdom of Ulishak. Um, so that gives you just a, an idea of where you guys are in um, in terms of the uh, the wider uh, world. Go ahead, John. Sorry, I interrupted you. We heard uh, Dumas, the, the Duke's son, went native and is part of the cult of the Sea Dragon, right? Yeah. So the only the other bit of um, history that was uh, relevant that uh, Sir. Um, 
Uh, let's see here. Uh, that, uh, well, I mean, all of you guys would know this because you, uh, the Duchy of uh, Cloven Bay is outside of the uh, the dir direct realm and control of Elisa. Elisa is one of the uh, successor kingdoms to Ulishak. And uh, the uh, kingdom of uh, Elisa has been, uh, for the last 50 or so years, uh, been under the control of the Cult of the Sea Drake. Uh, the Cult of the Sea Drake, uh, when the last king died and the last prince disappeared, uh, the cult took over as regent and has been running that kingdom ever since. And yeah, they really have been uh, sort of aggressively expanding out uh, as well in the interim. So if the Cult of the Sea Drake is here, or members of the uh, Cult of the Sea Drake, um, that may. Uh, bode well for um, the pr the wealth and prospects of, uh, uh, or at least the uh, the prospects to date uh, and the uh, riches that uh, Cloven Bay has earned, uh, because they're getting the attention of um, the rulers, the de facto rulers of Elisa. Mm -hmm. Anything else had, had, uh, happened last time? Yes, uh, when we uh, talked to Pig Stink about the shuriken we found, Jawa uh, Jawar had a uh, insight into it. Um, that it, whoever it was poorly made um so yeah you want to add to that jeff i wrote it down and i accidentally threw it the piece of paper that i wrote down the name of the <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> i had some work stuff my... on there and i forgot that, that was an important so the, so the... as far as uh zard or doc is concerned uh, he thinks maybe somebody's trying to frame the particular order that uh of monks or ninjas that use the shuriken to set them up but that's just his perspective. Right. There you go. Monks of Yarth. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything we, else? Uh, yeah, we headed to the tavern after that and met uh, Vartlan, uh, my half-elven brother that's proprietor. Yeah. And uh, said a few hellos and then noticed a strange-looking creature called an Udu that I studied because its form is fascinating. So you don't know it as an Udu. You don't know what the hell it is. Yeah, so. I got the name on the uh, uh, token there, and then I've got this here to bring the rest of you guys up to speed. It looks really cool. <laughs> yeah, he does. Uh, and, uh, Udu. And we saw, I think, a, uh, a group of people dressed up in like the dragon, sea priest or sea dragon clothing, and one of them was staring intently at uh, Sir Ventier. Yes. Yep. And I did not like the look of it. No. Okay, so um, what you see on the screen here, guys, is to give you a sense of what Cloven Bay is like, uh, one of the first things you'll notice as you're approaching Cloven Bay is this massive, uh, the keep of um, uh, the, the House of Rindabar. The docks look very much like this. They're very, they're old. They've been built up for, for uh, centuries. And they, uh, it is the deepest water port Okay, I'm getting some feedback from somebody. Hold on here. Where am I getting that sound from? Uh, just as uh, Steve, if you haven't, uh, you might want to uh, make sure you've got the um, uh, set so you're only receiving and broadcasting video in the Roll20 game. Okay. Uh, just because it'll be, if it's playing, uh, if you're broadcasting audio from that, I think that might be what's being picked up here. Okay. Um, the let's see here uh this is an idea what the the streets of cloven bay are are like for you uh as well there is a sky tower or a uh, sky ship uh dock on the docks of cloven bay as well and then this here is the obelisk uh, the obelisk is so named because it is right next to this floating kind of um like black um edifice or, or like obelisk that the navigators use to uh, to try to uh, move, you know, it's got to be at least uh, at least as old as uh, Cloven Bay, uh, if not older. Uh, and the obelisk, the tavern, serves as both a a place for travelers to stay, but also uh, a place where you can um, uh, where you can be, like collect mail or whatnot that comes through from the navigators as well too. The navigators also, for those who can afford it, uh, will pay for um, the uh, what do you call it? It's the uh, mailing. All right, or messaging service. So 
our the reason I show that is because I think at uh, the start of our session, guys, what we're going to start with is with a oh okay, I'm getting someone's uh, audio. I'm hearing the music coming up quite hmm. loud. I don't know who that. Mine's pretty. Oh, make sure it's quiet, but it's pretty quiet. Yeah. Okay. My audio's there. I've got video everything over here. Yeah, because I can hear the... You guys can hear that too, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah I put yeah, myself on mute to make sure it wasn't me, but it, it was still playing, so... Okay. Put my sound down. Let's see here. Okay, I killed my music completely. Okay, that seems to... Uh, yeah, I can't hear it at all anymore. Okay, perfect. Okay, then it must have been me. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. But I, it was, I guess it was just having the music playing. Yeah. Well, I don't think... You, I'm not sure you ever... Do you play the music in our other games? I, I rarely do. I, it, it was... Some of our other music is usually louder type of music. Yeah. And so that wasn't as loud, so it didn't bother me as much. So I left it on. But yeah, I, I've got, got it turned it. off. Okay. Here, my bad. Excellent. All right. So, guys, our scene opens with... Um, Dusk falling in um, in Cloven Bane, and what we can see, uh, making their way down into town, are uh, two. Nope, and just as if summoned. Hello, my faithful yeah, hound has arrived. We can see two individuals. One is a blonde-haired uh, Talathi uh, man, who is uh, accompanied by a wolf. And the two of them make their way down into, uh, you know, fr from they're clearly coming from the uh, foothills and the uh, forested um, uh, region uh, outside of Cloven Bay. And they make their way down into the town itself. And uh, because the overcast skies are beginning to disgorge some uh, icy uh, pellets of rain, uh, the streets are mostly. Uh, either empty or with people who are trying to, you know, make their way to their destination so they can get out of this uh, uh, this weather. Um, Cloven Bay is, of course, located right on the Bay of Ulor, and as such, it uh, sometimes uh, gets exposed to. Uh, hey, excuse me, Anna. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Found the place with the most wires. Yes. Where's your ball? <laughs> Where's your ball? Go get your ball. And we're going to hear the wolf sounds in a moment here. Ow, I think. All right. The um, the two of them uh, begin, you know, uh, making their way through the wolf. Uh, what? Uh, Will, why don't you tell us what the wolf looks like? Um, let's say shaggy. No. Get your ball. Almost. Get your ball. I mean, it has the traditional kind of gray color but there's almost a blueness to it okay. as well interesting um and blue eyes yeah most interesting yeah and steve oh you got any uh, anything to add about to we we have of course uh the illustration of uh bodan the bold oh, mm -hmm. let me go here there you go guys Fine looking man. <laughs> uh, so you guys are making your way through and uh, you know that, um, uh, I guess you have known that uh, Sir uh, Kira left quite early. Uh, you were hoping to reach her, but you know that when she gets herself on, uh, Patches is the name of her, uh, uh, her um, horse, uh, she tends to run kind of pell-mell uh, with it. So she'll... It's, you were unlikely to catch her anyway, and so it doesn't surprise you you didn't catch her before she got back. Um, you are late arrivals uh, to the uh, to the reunion uh, scheduled with um, uh, the with Halen Ventier, the son of uh, uh, Duke of uh, Lord Ventier, the master of Murder and Doom, and the brother of uh, Sir Kira. We see you guys making your way uh, outside of uh, the town proper. And making your way over to the obelisk, because the obelisk is just on the outskirts of uh, of town. And as you guys are making your way in, um, 
why don't you guys each, let's get some dice rolling here. Uh, under the primary skills, the top skill for both of you guys should be uh, perception. So if mm -hmm. you guys could each roll perception for us, let's see how you do. 114. Jesus. <laughs> That's good, right? That's pretty good, yeah. And you only rolled a 54 too, jeez. Yeah, in this game, high is good. High's high is always really good, good, yeah. High is always good. High is always good. And Steve-O, you able to find that? Um, sorry, where is it again? Under uh, skills, uh, the primary skills, the top skill is perception, and there should Got be it. a dice on the right side of that that section of the sheet. There you go. Okay. There you go. So um, you can see that the, the rain is kind of coming down. You guys are a little wet. Um, Nimrice, you look over. Uh, oh, do you go by Nimrice or Woodwolf? He goes by Nimrice most of the Nimrice time. Nimrice say okay. So Nimrice, you look over and you can see Patches is in there. Um, and it looks like uh, the stable boys are sort of like taking the, the saddles off and whatnot too. But you can see that there is a bundle on the saddle that she didn't bother to bring in. Now, one of the things about okay. Myrna Doom is that uh, Myrna Doom is a uh, also kind of a like library. Uh, it's been built up as a house of a place of, of uh, scholarship, and this looks like a bundle of scrolls or something. The um, li the librarian or the master of the uh, the uh, collection is someone named Lillian, uh, a former student at the Griffin College. Lillian, uh, very rarely when someone needs to transport a book from or tomes from one place to another, has sort of a like a fairly recognizable way of, of bundling them up, and that's sitting on her uh, on um, Sir Kiero's uh, saddle still. The saddle boys or the stable boys seem to be kind of talking back and forth about what to do with this stuff. Should they bring it in or whatnot? What this tells you is she's normally not that careless. Like, this is not a small thing. This is, imagine, like, a bundle of, like, four or five, uh, you know, good-sized uh, books uh, kind of bundled together and then secured against the elements with, um, you know, oiled leather and whatnot. Um, it's unusual for Sir Kira to be so careless with something that Lillian would value so much. It's also weird that he has these here, that she would allow these books to be transported out anyway. So having seen that, what would you do? So I'm still in wolf form, right? You are, yeah. And it takes you no time at okay. all. Like basically, it's it's a fifty percent action to transform back. Yeah, I'm gonna transform back into my elf self, my okay. bipedal. There yep. we go, bipedal self. Yep. And um, speak to the the stable hands. Okay. I will take these books to her. <sighs> they all they kind of uh, are startled by uh, your sudden appearance. And they sort of look back and forth uh, with each other. And um, elves in this setting are um, closer to the Tolkien tall, you know, uh, elves. So you probably are, are quite um, an imposing presence. They don't give you any guff with it. Hand the books off to you. And then you're able to um, to head into the, um, the obelisk uh, proper. So... Let's talk about what we're seeing inside. Okay, guys, so. There we go. So as you guys step in and out of the bad weather, let me switch over. Is this the one I want? All right. So there's some music being played in the... Um, in the obelisk, and the obelisk is quite busy. Uh, it's it's not unusual for it to be, you know, uh, a, a fairly busy destination, but uh, tonight uh, definitely um, is is one of the busier nights that you have uh, have seen here. Um, Bodan and Nemrice, you've both uh, been here before. Obviously, uh, Nemrice, you spent, you know, uh, some early years here, uh, fostered with uh, mm -hmm. Vartalon. And then you uh, can hear from across the uh, bar uh, the boisterous or a boisterous sound uh, voice that you can recognize, uh, Nemrice. 
Is that my other brother? <laughs> and what you can see. Yeah, my smiles. Waves. See, he comes here. <laughs> oh, not just one set of brothers, another set of brothers, too. <laughs> Come here, Wood Wolf. And he comes up to you and, and gives you a, he, you can hear the tack tack as his, uh, he alternates between his cane and his uh, uh, peg leg. Uh, for as long as you've known him, uh, Nemrise, uh, he's had that peg leg. Uh, so uh, Steve Vartalon, you may not know this. Vartalon is the is a half elf. He's a very old half elf, and he's mm -hmm. also the half brother of Nemrice and Zartordak. Oh, so he looks down and says, "Oh, who is this? You brought your friend with you too." These are our friends, Bodan. Bodan. Yes. Well met, Bodan. Love it indeed. Uh, so I take it. Have you come to see them then? Oh, Dax back. His eyes is all funny. Hmm. Uh, he leans uh, down from the bar where he's sitting and uh, raises I'm a mug. I'm you guys at a table. There's enough oh, of you okay. that you would need a, a table. Okay. Yeah, he raises uh, his mug over to Nimrais and nods at him. So actually you, say anything till it gets close. Vartalon kind of does that, like, you know, um, overly touchy family member thing where he kind of grabs you and pulls you over, and he's like, Look, look, over there. There he is. <laughs> There's old Dak. Look at him all back. I wave too. at my. Oh, but I got. Wave at my brother and head over there to the table. Okay. So you walk over, and then, um, Jeff, why don't you tell um, Nimrice there's, there is one other person here who he has not met before. Uh, and that is uh, Jawar. What does he see as as he walks over to the table? Um, I think at, at this point, um, Jawar would be just quietly sitting in, in the corner. He's, he's maybe even got his hood up so people can't really quite see his eyes and exactly where he's watching. Um, he's used to taverns uh, resulting in trouble. And so... He doesn't really drink himself, but he's seen what the drink does to people, and um, most often it leads to boisterous uh, activities, which lead to brawling in his history. And yeah. so he's sort of always ready for it, for anything to break out in a brawl, and he seems to be here with some of the loudest, or well now with some of the louder people. So okay. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that, that's what you see uh, there as well too. And uh, he, uh, Jawar seems to be positioned uh, fairly close to him behind uh, Sir Kira. Now Sir Kira doesn't—it's not a um, you know a um, a big change for you. You've seen Sir Kira in the last few months, uh, but Zartor Dak, oh, he certainly looks different. John, why don't you tell uh, Will what? Uh, Zartor Dak looks like, or, or Dak oh, yeah. looks like. So, uh, as a almost strict uh, opposite of his brother, uh, White Wolf, uh, Night Wolf, or, or Dak, uh, is like dark hair. Um, not, he doesn't have quite quite pale skin, but it's, it's sun-kissed and tanned. Um, but his eyes are the, uh, the interesting bit. Like, you're used to say they were dark eyes, um, but they've got this, uh, if the light catches them just right, it's like a silvery sheen from behind the retinas, which you might be familiar with because I'm Guessing that uh, shape shifting does that, um, you could tell he's come into his own uh, alternate form. But uh, he's he's dressed in you know good looking fur, uh, very fine, not built for the cold, but to look nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's just got kind of like a shadow over him, but he's he doesn't look like he's trying to fade into the or thing. He's seen some stuff, mm -hmm. and he's looking for more. So the other, uh, you, you can tell as well that Sir Kira has a fairly, um, a look of disappointment on her face, I think, uh, as well, Nimrice. And one of the things that is noticeably absent here uh, is, unless he has stepped away, is Halen Ventier. The son, the one who went off with um, Zartor Dak and Zartor Crick. He's not at the table, and with, I'll let you roll forward that, that great uh, perception roll that you got from before. 
There's not an empty <laughs> chair with a drink in front of it. It's not necessarily something Nimrice is disappointed by. Yeah. So. Um, Interesting. Uh, Bodan and uh, now Bodan, you um, you are one of the scholars who has been um, at uh, Myrna Doom for the last uh, a few months. Uh, so Circa Kira is known to you. Uh, you've seen uh, Woodwolf around uh, as well too. Uh, Nimrice uh, usually stays in the forests and the and the mountains around uh, Myrna Doom, but uh, you you are at least uh, familiar enough with him to travel with him. The others are strangers to you, though. Uh, Zarthodak, you've never met before. Uh, Jawar, you never met before. Although um, Bodan, uh, under your secondary skills, you should have a skill called Lore History. Lore History, indeed. Yeah, why don't you give us a, a Lore History check? All right. Where did it go? There it is. More history. There it is. And roll. Oh, it's a good score. Mm -hmm. And 102. What's up? Nice. So what you can tell is uh, Jawar, he wears the distinctive uh, white robes associated with a, um, a an order of martial artists called the Changramai Order. The Changramai mm. monks are... Uh, you know, for 400 generations have been producing some of the finest um, hand like uh, unarmed warriors uh, of anywhere in uh, Shadow World. Um, the the monastery you know is located on a continent to the south called Emer. And uh, one of the ways that you see them uh, at times <coughs> is as uh, mercenaries. Uh, one of the things they do is they'll hire out as bodyguards or, you know, uh, protectors or guards or things like that. The Griffin College, for instance, in uh, in Rakan has uh, is staffed by uh, Changramai or has guards that are Changramai monks. It's strange that that one you have not seen one here thus far, but the way that uh, Jawar is standing behind or near uh, Sir Kiera makes you think that uh, someone may have hired him as a bodyguard. Hmm. Okay, yeah, I'll mention that he's uh, kind of holding himself like a bodyguard. Uh, who are you mentioning that too? Oh, uh, I'll whisper it uh, to, to, to the gang. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Under his breath. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you uh, say that. Um, Jawar, do you have any response? or? Um, I think he would just nod at him. Like, sort of like as he's saying it, just sort of like, um, you know, yes. But without, you know, wouldn't say it out loud. Okay. He would nod at him. So as you guys, um, they can make, uh, certainly they can make space at the table for you guys. Are, are you going to join? Nemrice, Bodan? Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, yes. I think at this point, maybe Jawar would stand up and stand behind uh, Sir Kira to give up his seat for the newcomers. Sure. So Bodan and Nemrice, once you get yourself uh, situated, you do a quick look around the room and the things uh, that um, stand out. For one, there are a couple of uh, Sir Kikar, um <laughs> Uh, sailors or warriors or raiders in here. The Sirka Car are a um, uh, more like lighter skinned, lighter haired um, uh, ethnicity that comes from uh, the northern part of Jamin. Um, they have a lower level of, of uh, technology than what the uh, southern kingdoms uh, do. So if you picture as like kind of like Viking raiders type uh, things or traders, that's a you've got the right idea from that. Uh, there are also some uh, Saralan mercenaries. Uh, in here, I, I mentioned that um, Seralus was one of the kingdoms, the kingdom of the uh, Wyverns. Uh, that place has been collapsed uh, since before the end of the Second Age of Ire and the Wars of Dominion. Seralus has been destroyed for more than 6,000 years. Uh, and the people, nice. <laughs> hi, Marjorie. Uh, the uh, Actually, my sister. <laughs> oh, hi. <laughs> hi, John's sister. Uh, the, um, the thing that, that has... Um, uh, sprung up from there. The, the hardy people who survived in the ruins of Seralus, they've kind of made their, their um, made a name for themselves as mercenaries. Uh, there are, uh, as uh, John mentioned, there are the priests of the Sea Drake and the priest guards with them as well, too. But the most interesting thing that you can see in here is 
Uh, where is he? Yes. Rarity, what are you crying for? There's no crying. <laughs> There's no crying. Hit your ball. Um, navigator. So the one thing that this illustration does not show uh, for, I showed this to the guys uh, on Friday, but for Will and uh, Steve, this, the guy who is sitting at one of the tables uh, across from uh, one of the most unusual creatures you've seen looks exactly like this, but the one dis difference is there is a brass and gold sextant that is uh, hanging around his uh, neck. And you know that to be the, um, uh, what he calls it, the uh, symbol of one of the guilds of the uh, navigators. Sitting across from him and enjoying his dinner is this. Hmm. Now, Nemrice, you're not uh, particularly well-traveled, uh, but Steve, I can tell you, it, it doesn't matter how well you rolled on your dice, um, you could not identify what species this thing is. Hmm. Okay. It's it's carrying on a, either it is an extremely well trained pet um, because mm -hmm. it's seen, it has all the appearance of having a conversation with the navigator um, as it's picking food from a shared plate between the two. Mm -hmm. He stands about uh, maybe a little bit more than um, uh, three feet tall, but not much more. Okay. And other than that, the, the it's just the usual crowd of sailors and, and whatnot uh, in um, you know in the obelisk. Um, now uh, anything so with it, now you, you sat back down and then Rice, it has been eight years since you've seen Ordak. Yeah, I'm I'm really happy to see my half brother, my younger half brother, who the closest thing I really feel to, I guess, appear. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to hear how you have been. What mm -hmm. have you learned? Well, uh, they tried to teach me a whole lot of um, essence magic, but uh, my true calling was mentalism. Mm, I can see that very easily for you. But uh, I did learn enough tricks from you that uh, my use of essence magic has developed into shape shifting. Hmm. Believe that runs strong in our family. Well, I'm not sure if my brother, the the other one, uh, displays much, but he hasn't shared much of his abilities with me. Secrets. We can assume that uh, uh, Zarda Crick is meeting with the uh, Duke at this point. He's probably with uh, the. Um, Oh, what's his name here? Uh, Dorak. Dorak is the court wizard of uh, uh, for the Duke's uh, Thousand. Uh, Dorak was the one, I think, that who first noticed the uh, Nimrice's magic and, well, I mean, all the uh, half-elves, all the half-elf brothers. Um, so he is uh, off meeting with him uh, right now. Is uh, Liquid Alteration part of Essence Magic? Uh, liquid alter yours is, is uh, hybrid, so it actually uses both. If, if it comes from the mystic base list, which I think those spells do, liquid alteration is a mystic base list. It's a uh, yes. hybrid of the two. Okay, so yeah, and I'll uh, tell uh, Nemerus in detail. You know, illusions. You know, water manipulation, movement, confusion. Uh, a lot of my abilities are tied to water and in the mind. Uh, and you could even, like, if you want to have some flourish uh, to it too, John, you, you could, you know, do some small minor, you know, thing, um, like, a, like a cantrip style thing. That would just be showing off. I don't think I need to do that. Ah, okay. <laughs> but, uh... What's that? John's not showing off? What, 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 what? This <laughs> is a different character than Dorman. <laughs> I know, it's just funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, that is good. I'm glad that you have returned safely. It's, uh, it's a shame uh, our foster brother was not interested in returning. Halen. Nimrice does not like Halen. <laughs> um, Nimrice sees Kira as a, like a niece or a little sister. 
So anytime Halen was harassing her, Nimrice always tried to step in. So that's not a huge loss. Although, did he stay? I have ideas of where he is. Mm. But um, it, the, the shame is that uh, Kira will have to shoulder his duties because of his choices. Sir Kira is stronger than any of us to match him. I do not think she will have any problems. And if she does, she's surrounded by good company. Mm. Indeed. But so, speaking of which, at that point, I want to take that book bundle and pass that off to her. Okay. And say, so she looks Sir in Kira. Where was that? It was still on your horse. Of course. Uh, <laughs> forgive me. I. And she takes it from you. Thank you. Uh, if I had lost those, uh, Lillian would have killed me. I'm, I'm supposed to deliver these to uh, a gnome staying here. A scholar. Didn't we see a gnome in here earlier? Uh, you're looking around. No gnomes that you can see. No, it's weird. Aye, but they're we, we people. They could be hiding. Yeah. <laughs> Or wait, why don't you give us, uh, Zarka Drak, why don't you give us a uh, perception check? Mm, not see. one of my best skills, but... Hey, that's why they put 100s on dice. <laughs> okay, so from, not from here, but maybe, maybe if you got up and looked around, you may be able to uh, see. It's just uh, people are standing and moving around and talking, you know, while standing. Uh, so it's just, it's a difficult, you know. Um, yeah. And the, the bar, too, is one of those things where, like, it kind of, like, winds around the bar room. Uh, so it, there may be places in the back. There is a second level as well, too. And the bar's yeah. dog always wants to play with her ball. She... <laughs> but uh, I would, like, uh, look over at uh, Kira, Sir Kira and say, uh, do you, uh, you know where this gnome is? Or where he's supposed to be? I was told he was staying here. Uh, the name she gave was uh, Nigelius Hearthcut Cole. Nigelius. That's a mouthful. Indeed. Yeah. Hey, uh, Nimrice looks over it. Look, looks over at Zardadak and says, why not ask our brother? I was just about to, and I and, lean back and say, Vartilai! And boom, he, as if, uh, you know, uh, arriving unbidden, uh, Vortilon, uh pushes past you and boom, puts out a bunch of mugs. Here, yeah, something proper to celebrate by. Yes, I was going to ask for that too. Uh, you, you, you sure you're not trained in magic? <laughs> I don't choke <laughs> with that. Uh, have you seen a uh, little person gnome? Uh, Before here, of course. Yeah, apparently, uh, Sir Kira has some books for him. Wait, you mean staying here? Yes. Yeah, it's at uh, Noi Noijelius. He's off by the That's fire the reading. Ah, boy, you got business with him. Boy, you Sir waste Kira. no time, old Doc. No, you just I, walked I, in here. I do not know him, but Sir Kara has business with him. Oh, I see. Well, so Kier, you'll find him over by the fire. If you need him. But first, and he pushes the mugs kind of around to all of you guys, picks it up. The Sons of Tavar! The Sons of Tavar. And mugs are all taken. Um, why don't, uh, Steve, give us another uh, lore, uh, either regional or history, whichever one you'd prefer. Regional or history? Yeah, I can't remember which. If you're, you may have the same score in both of them. Actually, you're all right. I do, but I think that I'm going to pick regional anyway. Okay, sounds good. Did it work? Yeah, nope, and just uh, to oh, it did one sixty. Nice. <laughs> Holy shit, Steve! <laughs> Fucking hell! All right, so you sort of like uh, at, at, you stop for a second and you're like, wait a minute, the sons of Tavar. So. Steve, one of the things you know about is there is a notoriously dangerous uh, diary or uh, dark elf 
pirate named Tavar Blackheart. Mm. And one of the mm -hmm. stories you've heard about Tavar Blackheart is that um, his way, because the elves in uh, this setting, they live forever, unless they die by violence or some other specific wing. Um, he is mm. a, yes, he is a, um, uh, has found homes in many ports and it said it has left a brood spread across the region to uh, uh, to um, extend his influence. Can't trust I anybody agree. like you can family, right? Mm -hmm. But Tavar Blackheart is there is a uh, um, an island nation called Placidar that is just to the south of uh, Jamin. Mm -hmm. It's right here. This place is completely, mostly dominated by dark elves and dark elf pirates. Not merchants, not traders, pirates. And Tavar Blackheart is one of the most notorious of those. You're looking around and you realize that like shit, like these actually might be some of the sons, the offspring of Tavar. Offspring. Well, how do I feel about that, do you think? You tell me. <laughs> well, I don't like men who have offspring. <laughs> or bruised especially, so. Who's out? No, half of our purpose here, man. <laughs> All right, so then, with that, um, what would you guys uh, like to do next? Anything we should do in, in the, the bar before uh, there may be some things happening in the bar as well, too. Um, but anything you guys wish to do in particular? Well, that the dragon priest group is uh, fairly interesting and has a sea drink. I feel like the sea drink, yeah. And has an unhealthy uh, interest in my foster sister. So oh. I'm paying a lot of attention to them. I th okay, so you're paying attention over there. Um, I think that it was only Jawar who noticed that, though. Oh. Yeah, I don't think that you, unless Jawar said something about that, uh, he was the one who had um, who noticed that. Okay. As I you said, I think your perception score is not great. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, I was I was thinking something similar. I I think at some point, um, like you know jawar would you know as a natural if we're here for a while he would excuse himself to go to the washroom at some point and i think on his return he would try to sort of stealthily as possible you know be close to their table for a bit to see if he can hear any of their conversations sure. sort of returning to our table so um one thing does happen like the um uh, the privy would be located outside so you you know step yeah, outside yeah. the that's what i figured rain's coming down you put your hood up and um, would you give us a perception roll again? I don't know why people complain about role match being complex. Clearly, the only thing you do is roll perception and lore. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. Other thing is, uh, you know, uh, clench great. until you get your spell off because you never know if that's going to happen. Not yeah. a great D100. So what, uh, okay, I guess one thing to mention is you guys do have, uh, there are four of you today, which means you have eight points of Astonishing Fortune. Oh, yeah. Ooh. I shall four. That worries it's, me. It's only a two-hour session, so it'll be four uh, points of astonishing fortune. But um, you could re-roll that if you like, Jeff, or just. Uh, you, you... Uh, yeah, sure. This seems okay. important enough. Let's do it. Okay. No. Oh, Oh, yeah, slightly Remember, so that um, the for these types of things, whether it's a static uh, maneuver, normally if, if you're not rolling against someone, a 100 is what you need, and then otherwise it is you'll get part of the success. It doesn't mean it's not a binary like success fail unless it is. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah right. You get 85 percent of the success. Exactly. So you, you know you may pick up something. Um, what you get out, and the wind is beginning to pick up, and the and the uh, rain is coming down, and. Um, you think of what, um, I guess, Nim Rice, one thing you would be thinking of is that uh, Sir Kiera mentioned before that those bodies were uh, in the stream. Like, what she had found was there were crows that were circling over these bodies in the in the, uh, the uh, one of the creeks or, or um, um, uh, small little streams uh, that cuts its way through the mountains around Myrna Doom. Uh, she saw that it seems like the bodies were not pr properly carried away and there had not been rain for quite some time. 
if there's rain right now, she did not bring the bodies with her. If the rain uh, picks up even more, uh, it may cause the stream to rise and it may wash those bodies downstream as the original people intended. She saw the crows, did not see the bodies, but she saw a stain of blood or stain on one of the rocks, Ooh. went down, explored further downstream, and then found the crows circling over where there was a fox that was picking at one of the bodies. The bodies, as she told you, had ink stains on their hands and seemed to be uh, likely from one of the southern regions. Uh, soft, otherwise mm. hands, uh, probably traveling scholars. Why so, are they slaying? Why are they in the woods? Yeah, and this hmm. is the um, broken uh, weapon that they, uh, she successfully identified as a shuriken uh, was something that was pulled from their throat. Right. A broken bit. And about of how it. far away was this from here? This was about halfway. So um, just as you get uh, kind of out of the uh, the hills and whatnot of uh, Murder Doom, and you get into or the mountains of Murder Doom, and then get at the old home, and then down into the foothills, there is a cabin there that's kind of like a halfway point. So if weather is, um, if you're trying to get up there in the winter time and you find yourself not able to carry on, you can winter in that cabin. She had just passed that cabin and come across a bridge, and it seems as if these bodies may have been cast over the bridge. There were three of them. All of them had the same uh, stains on their hands and they all seem to have been killed in the same way. And as context, this you cannot think of in your lifetime anyone having been killed on the route up to Murder Doom. It's wild, but I mean, with uh, proper precautions like, you know, driving off bears or, you know, keeping wolves at bay or whatnot, uh, or just, you know, not traveling when the weather's not right. It's a safe trip. Uh, there aren't things right. that, that... These, this is this is human on human violence, not animal violence. Absolutely. And then the that uh, right. monks of Yarth, uh, they uh, what uh, Jawar learned from last time was that the monks of Yarth uh, seem uh, similar, uh, similarly uh, kind of secretive in the uh, ancient order like the uh, Changramai. Uh, only the um, the oh, did we lose John in? Oh, yeah, just, he's back. Oh, there he is. No. Oh. That was weird. Um, uh, they seem to be in uh, service to something called the Unlife, or they're said to be. Uh, oh. Sir Kira also shared news, uh, our story of about 4,000 years ago, one of the kings of uh, 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 Elisa uh, was murdered, said to have been murdered by a, uh, a monk of Yarth. Uh, then, Jawar, what you do is you get out, you, you make your way to the privy, um, and then on your way back in, you hear kind of a flapping sound. <laughs> and you look up to the top of the, uh, one of the eaves, I suppose, around uh, the obelisk, and you see, maybe your eyes are playing tricks on you. It's a seagull. But the feathers on this thing, like it's got that you know, distinctive silhouette to it. But the light that's being cast from one of the open windows on the second floor by one of the guests catches this thing's feathers. And the feathers are as ink black as what a raven's feathers would be. Well, that's new. And you look, and then whoever's on the second floor closes it, and you can't see it any longer. Mm. Closes the window, so the light being cast out is gone. It may still be there, but then you hear kind of a f flapping of wings. I'm not sure you've ever, in all your travels, ever seen a black seagull. No. Nope. I think that would creep me out a little bit, and I would <laughs> get back inside. Okay. So you hurry yourself back inside. And then, um, so your plan is to try and... Um, kind of like eavesdrop on the... Yeah, so whether it's like, you know, depending on where the position of the table is, whether I've got to sort of go up to the bar and order something and then move from there, or like just to make it seem natural, but yeah. to blend into the crowd and stand close to their table for some time. So just let's to do this. See if I can eavesdrop on Why them. don't you give us a stock check? In uh, Rollmaster, yeah. the kind of stealthy thing is stock hide. Uh, yeah. 
So you're... I'm pretty good at it. I think you are. And I'll give you a plus 10% to it as well. It's because there's a, it's a busy bar. On, good roll, uh, yes! Oh my. Holy shit. All right, so let's see what they have to say. All right. So yeah, so you grab your, um, you know, grab a, a drink from uh, uh, Vartalon, and then you weave your way through the uh, the crowd, and um, you can find, uh, you know, get yourself uh, sitting at a table where you're kind of like your back is. You seem to be sitting with other people, but your back is to kind of everybody. Right where right. you're, you're yeah, just yeah. like you're in the middle of the crowd, but no one, you're not part of any one grouping. Um, and the priest is talking to the, well, let's do this maybe, because I think he's not going to be talking about, uh, anything, um, overtly, you know, uh, evil out loud. Give us a uh, perception check. Um, well, this is just to see if you overhear anything. They seem to be like, um, nur or he at least seems to be nursing some food and having, uh, some drinks there or having a drink. There's food in front of everyone else. Ah, okay. Not get over a hundred on these perception checks. Uh, so what? Um, what he says? What one of the? You know, I'm picturing you're going to be there for about maybe 15 minutes. Yeah, like just to get the gist of what they're talking about, essentially. The n not much of of, uh, of import. I mean, really, they're almost not talking. Like, yeah, uh, they the guards right. are all sitting around, and then there is a, he. Uh, the priest is at the center, and. Um, then he, the only things you overhear is he comments uh, that uh, we'll be meeting with uh, the Duke tomorrow, uh, ensure that everything is ready. And he says, uh, um, I think I'll have a word. You wait here, because uh, one of the guards seems to try and stand. And he gets up and makes his way across. And again, you, you can see from uh, where you are that this guy seems to be uh, an elf, full-blooded elf. Okay. When he, once he stands up, he towers over everyone and, and he begins making his way across the room. And uh, the rest of what Nimrice, uh, Ordak, uh, Bodan, what are you guys doing? There while uh, Jawar was stretching his legs. Anything you guys wish I to think do? I'm, I think I want to talk to the rest of them about these bodies, and perhaps we should go and investigate as this is basically a murder. Hmm. Good suggestion. Uh, Rodak says that. With, I suggested we ride home because, you know, it's not a good sign, but it's. The horses cannot see in the dark like we can. And it's halfway back home, which is several hours away. Well, also, mm. you guys don't have horses. Uh, like, there may there are stables at uh, Myrna Doom, but uh, Sir Kira didn't bring any extra horses down here. And you can't really rent them to bring up. You just, you just walk. Oh, okay. At approximately six miles an hour. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> So, any other thoughts on this, uh, uh, Nimrice? Sir Kira may have thoughts on it as well, too, but I will leave it for Dave to uh, make his decision as to what uh, she does. Yeah, I was thinking maybe we could leave her here with the books and the gnome to that business, and then perhaps we could. So, head she up is quite insistent on going back tomorrow. Um, she realizes that she did forget. Uh, she was supposed to meet with a duke uh, as well. It has not done so. Uh, but her, her father is going to want to know that Halen didn't return immediately. Yeah, you know, if word gets true. back to uh, to him uh, by gossip or by someone else, and the I think the what, what, what John and uh, Jeff, what what do you guys remember about um, Sir Kira's thoughts on what? Um, you know, what happened uh, to or what the reason for killing those uh, scholars would have been. They were also found nude, incidentally, uh, in Emrise, stripped of all clothing. Oh my gosh. Mm. I seem to be remembering uh, possibly fears of 
assassins, but it's about all I can recall. Mm. But, uh, oh, yes. Um, we discussed, you know, it, it's been days since this happened, and they could have easily gotten to uh, her father if there was a target. So we thought maybe one of them was holding up with the monks in the library or the librarians. They could have easily hidden themselves there. Yeah, because there's always Murder Doom is a, a half a community of traveling scholars. So the thought is, is that, or it's what uh, uh, Sir Kara was thinking, is that the assassins uh, could have taken uh, their um, taken the robes of the of the scholars and then replaced them and hidden themselves amongst the uh, uh, the ranks of the other visiting scholars. Uh, right. Bowden. Yeah. Would you? I'm just trying to think what this would be here. Why don't you give us a. Uh, give us a diplomacy check. Okay. Drop it. Drop it. Yes, indeed. Hold on here. Diplomacy. There you go. Dance. Can I do a diplomacy dance? <laughs> no. <laughs> Wait. Okay. One and. Nice. Boom. All right. Oh. So. Bodan, one thing you remember is so because you like you're part of those of those uh, scholars. You're part of the the kind of the group of scholars. So you see the, the uh, quarters that they live in. Um, Myrna Doom is a like restored um, ancient elven ruin. Uh, it was a uh, uh, built by the Loari elves like eight to ten thousand years ago, and then uh, after uh, Lord Vinci took control of it, he rebuilt it. So like. The, the existing structures are quite old. They're sort of one of those blocks where the scholars all live. And as a result, you kind of see the people coming and going in the same way like you would at a hostel. And what um, you remember is, like, I am I correct in thinking that Bodan is a fairly chatty Kathy, Steve? Oh, oh indeed, very friendly, affable fellow. So the timing for this, what uh, Sir Kira remembered when she was investigating the bodies is that it had been about four days since rain had come, which meant that the markings around where these bodies were, where the footprints were and such, were not washed away. It was at, at the most four days before she found the bodies. Four days ago, there was a group of five scholars who arrived from um, Rakan, from the Empire of Rakan, hmm. claiming to, uh, to be uh, travelers. And the one thing you noticed, they were not... Um, you know, one of the things that you find, I think, with the people who go and study at Myrna Doom is that when they get there and they say they see some of the riches that are there and the eclectic, you know, uh, books and, and tomes and folios and whatnot, there's a bit of a, an excitement. And it's also in a very, like, it's a gorgeous location. Uh, so usually people, when they get there, they're excited. And that usually translates into people wanting to chat. These scholars were not that. And I think with a diplomacy mm. role that well, you picked up that they were shutting down um, discussions and uh, like t too much discussion about where they came from, what they were studying and whatnot. They just kept sort of saying, oh, we're, you know, we're very tired from the studies. We look forward to this. Uh, they claimed that it was something to do with um, uh, uh, the, what do you call it? Um, inheritance uh, um, of one, like kind of one group of, of uh, families in the the Rakani Empire, mm -hmm. um, but yeah. So if there were, I mean, there were three bodies found, not five, but you do remember five scholars arriving uh, four days ago, around the time when these bodies may have been, uh, where these people may have been murdered. Okay, good. All right, now can we are you, uh, communicate that to the gentleman? Yeah. So while you guys are discussing that, um, Jawari, you see that the priest uh, stands and begins making his way over across the bar. Uh, what would you like to do? Um, so the other, um, how many other guys are sitting at the table? Three uh, or four? There or? were, I think there was uh, six. Six, lots, okay. Um, and they look to be soldier types, right? Definitely, yeah. This is uh, what they, where are they here? Yeah, the priest guards. 
um, Jawar wants to um, get up and make his way back across the bar. But what he wants to do is he wants to bump their table on the way by just so that he can watch them uh, grab their drinks and whatnot, just to kind of judge their quickness and their dexterity. Like he's sure. sort of he's sort of uh, judging them by how they react to him bumping into their table. Like, yeah. are they clumsy? Are they... Are, and are you trying to conceal that as well? The, yeah, the... like just trying to act drunk. Like, you know, he's trying to appear to be okay. sort of drunk and bumps into their table or it's crowded. Like, he doesn't sure. want to make it obvious. He's trying to make it... So uh, why don't you give us a trickery careful. roll? Please. And if you don't have it, it's just D100, right? Uh, if you do, I think you do have trickery. Oh, I do have trickery. Yeah. Oh, okay, it's at the secondary skills. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I got a lot of tricky skills here. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yeah, yes. yeah. So, you, how do you think this? I mean, you could even, you know, uh, you could have, like, uh, pushed a chair every so slightly so that it hits someone else and then they fall into the table. Yeah, and they knock their table over, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, they kind of fall on it and, uh, these guys, um, you know, like they're certainly not uh, Changermai monks, uh, but they are reacting pretty quickly. Right. They're yeah. They're they're well trained. They they're seem trained sober. Soldiers. They seem yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. You definitely okay. what you can see spill out from each of their glasses uh, is v heavily watered wine. Mm, excellent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you when you kind of look over your shoulder, you realize that this priest of uh, the Sea Drake is making his way over towards uh, the party's table. Yeah, that's kind of what I figured. So, I mean, I'd be following him, but not like closely, but like, you know. Yeah. Making my way over there so I don't miss what's going to happen, but. Sure. So uh, you're making your way over there and uh, I'll let you carry that 142 year old for stock. I, I will let you keep that. And you're easily able to, to you know, make your way towards them. Uh, and get yourself in a position where you can overhear. Are you making yourself known to this guy, or are you? Um, I I think at this point, I mean, I wasn't really. I, I just wanted to see if they would say anything. Now that he's introducing himself, I think I would return to my position of, like, maybe come up behind him, not to startle him, but then move and stand behind uh, Sir Kira again. Sure. So uh, he, this. Um... Elven man uh, walks up towards you guys, and he, very much like he's not holding a um, uh, a phoenix like he is in the illustration. What he's got in his hand is a disc that has a dark charcoal background with a um, a stylized sea drake uh, on the on the front or on the in the center of it in uh, silver, and he kind of stands there. Good evening. Well, forgive my interruption. Uh, my name is... My name is not uh, terribly important. Here. I am Brother Liran. The Order of the Sea Drake. Might I have a word? Of course, please. Very kind, very kind. And he seems to, um, uh, he steps forward a little bit further. Um, he says, forgive me, so I, I'm a stranger uh, to uh, Cloven Bay and have not, uh, uh, have not uh, traveled. What are you doing, Anna? <laughs> I heard a tearing of something. I'm like, that ain't good. <laughs> Give me one sec here. No. <laughs> good girl, good girl. She found, uh, I, I've had, for those listening at home, I, I've been on my ass the last uh, day and a bit uh, because of food poisoning. Uh, and uh, Anna Banana has been just an absolute peach, like by my side the entire time. So she's acting up a little bit tonight. That is completely understandable after I'm being so well behaved for two days. I goofus. Um, tore up some campaign notes, and so I, I think that's just a suggestion from my co DM that I should rethink that uh, <laughs> that idea. Um, so um, <laughs> Laurent sits down uh, or uh, stands still uh, and uh, says, "The forgive me, but and he, he turns to uh, Sir Kira and says, F "Are you the daughter of Lord Ventier?" 
And she kind of looks up and says, I... I am? Um, and he says, And your name? Your name is Kiera. Is that right? And you guys don't need to make rolls for us, but you can see that she's a little unnerved by this. And she says, yes, that's correct. And what business is it of yours? And he says, I f forgive. Uh, I, I mean no offense uh, by this. It just your father must be a true... Uh, he must be a loyal uh, servant of uh, Elisa and the line of the sea drake. And Sir Kier says, what do you mean? And she says, well, you, <laughs> you were surely named after the lost prince, were you not? And I think uh, anyone who's got any training in lore history, you guys will remember uh, the last uh, prince, the one who went missing 50 years ago, his name was Kir Ianus. Kir Ianus. And so, uh, Jawar, you're sort of seeing this from the over the counter, but. Sir Kira is looking very upset by the conversation that she's having with this guy, and uh, all of you guys can pick this up as well, too. And she says, so? What What business uh, what, what mattered uh, is it who I was named after? I says, oh, nothing. Just our attention has come. I've, we've, to this region, we've, we've heard of the great works that your father has built at Myrna Doom. A great trove of knowledge, I hear. Uh, perhaps not the rival of the Nomikos Library, but in time, hey? Eh? And the curious... Uh, tell me, where did your father come from again? From our understanding, you, your line only recently came into possession of Myrna Doom. Where did he come from before? And she's looking, uh, like I think uh, Zart uh, Ordak and Nimrice, you having grown up around her, Kira's response to stress at times is to respond with force. Uh, she looks like she's getting towards that point right now. Do you wish to do or say anything, or do you let her respond? Uh, I'll kind of uh, like clear my throat and says, um, "This uh, this seems more like a conversation one should have in a private setting, not inside of a tavern." But oh. uh, what is your intent here? Forgive me, stranger. What is your name? I am Zart Ordak also known as Nightwolf. The twins, Tavar's twins. I am one of. Interesting. Uh, and you've come to live. You are friends in service to the friends? Ventier family? Uh, Ser Kiera, and I, he stretches the word Ser, is my foster sibling. I see. Well, perhaps... We will see each other then. I, forgive me, I can see that I have upset you. Uh, Sir Kiera, that was not my intent at all. I s merely have an insatiably curious mind. Uh, the Zar, uh, Ordak gets a uh, like sly grin on his face and says, I too am a seeker of secrets. Ah, are you then? Indeed. I can almost smell them. Hmm. Mm. I've heard such things said of your father as well. Mm. You know of my father? And so if you sail, <laughs> the if you uh, are familiar with the byways and the, the uh, travels 
among the around the sea of the Bay of Ulor. The name of Tavar Blackheart is on the is uh, included in uh, nearly every dark tale uh, that we've heard. With that, uh, he'll uh, lean forward a little bit, and his his grin turns a bit more wolfish as his name. And he uh, he kind of he says, "Then you and I shall exchange words more. I do seek more word of my father." Okay, uh, are you trying to intimidate him, charm him? What are you thinking? I think charm. Charm, sure. Give us a. Um, well, assuming you're not, I mean, you could use seduction, I suppose. Uh, that is not uh, not the approach you were intending. <laughs> no, no, I'm going to say that is not outside of the realm of approaches Ordok would use. No, that's what I'm thinking. Like this, he, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, he he has a feeling this priest is sly and clever, and he wants to kind of use I think that. It's, it's your best uh, chatty chatty skill too. And, uh, yeah, give us have, a go yeah. ahead. So, look at that. So, there's a bit of a smile, indeed. I, I will not take more of your time. I, I do not mean to intrude. And again, I meant no offense. Uh, perhaps I can make some way of recompense when I come to Myrna Doom. Uh, you guys have not heard that the priests of the Sea Drake are coming to Myrna, Myrna Doom. Or welcome there, I suppose. Hmm. So... I bid you good evening. He nods to everyone, then makes a point of nodding to uh, uh, Ordak. So we meet again. And turns and, and goes. Uh, Sir Kira seems quite flustered at this point. Um, Jawar, to, do you rejoin the group or? Yeah, he was stand He had moved in. He was standing behind. Kira. Oh, behind her. Okay, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to, yeah, I'm trying to decide if he's just going to let him walk away or if he's going to say something to him. Okay. I think he would. I think that as he turns and walks away, I think that Jawar would step forward and, and put a hand on his shoulder just to get his attention. Sure. And, and kind of turn he him around. He seems genuinely and, surprised. Because yeah. uh, you're suddenly there. And Jawar would say, you seem to know everyone at my table. Do you also know who I am? Mm, he kids. Uh, his eyes narrows and he looks up and down. I don't. Best to keep your curiosities to yourself and never learn who I am. And I'll take my hand off his shoulder. Okay. Uh, you can feel his eyes on you. Uh, like he stands rigid in the uh, thing as you make your way back. Waits until you uh, make eye contact again. Then he turns and rejoins his companions. After a minute or so, they get up and they all depart, uh, leaving for their quarters elsewhere in the obelisk. Ah, uh, Jawar, I was trying to take the soft approach with him, but you had to go be hard on him. You think he is a friend? Oh, no. But Kira I've learned, and her family? I have learned that uh, it's best to keep your enemies closer than your friends. Well, Zart, you will soon learn that my position is between Kira and the dangers of this area. Jawar, Zart is my l last name, if you would say. Call me Ordak. Hmm. Yes, or Doc. Otherwise, you'll confuse me and my brother. <laughs> okay. Nimrice or Bodan, what do you make of all this? Nimrice has absolutely really no social skills. He, he never really has. So it, it's almost... It's almost perplexing the interchange, especially between Ordak and the priest. He's really just like, he's just really confused. Honestly, oh, that's Amrus. really where it boils down for him. It was just a polite pissing contest. Ah. I uh, will, I, hmm? I will never understand the ways oh, of it's... men talking to one another. Civilized conversation is nothing more than masking bloodshed. We just don't get hurt in the process. But sometimes it comes down to it anyway. Indeed. All I guys... heard were veiled threats. You heard correctly. Steve, were you going to say something? I was just, man, you guys are profound. I was going to say I would. I wanted to. <laughs> and I, uh, I was thinking I want to see what kind of man this this priest is and offer him a drink. But uh, hey, you yeah. might still be able to catch him. 
Hmm. Yeah, sure. Why don't I? Okay. So <laughs> don't Bodan... go alone. Don't go alone. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or Dak quickly uh, learns that uh, suggestions uh, are often seen as commands by Bodan, so he hops well, up. I have an enlightened human here in the form of Jawar, and uh, those two elves know better, but the human in the party? Uh, no common sense. So as you walk, as you sort of like approach him, uh, Bodan, because you're gonna have to hurry a little bit to um, to catch him before they leave the room. I think what happens is, as soon as you get close, one of those priest guards turns and sort of like uh, arrests you, stops you uh, from advancing any further with its gloved hand on you. Uh, and then the rest of them all sort of like kind of you know their arms, their hands aren't going directly to the swords, but they're moving in that general direction. And the priest turns, and he puts his hand up as if to say, "Hold on." And he says, "I'm sorry, my my uh, my friend. How can I assist you?" I mean, yeah, I was just wondering. I was, uh, you know, I just wanted to catch up and make sure, uh, you know, that we were all uh, on the same page, and maybe uh, get to know you a little bit. Can I offer you a drink? That's most kind, uh, my friend. Tell me, do you? Do you keep with uh, the teachings of the Sea Drake? Well, you know, I, I haven't had much of an opportunity to learn much about it, to be honest. But yeah, I would be curious. So I am, I am a, as it happens, a bard and a bit of a lore keeper. Uh, that's just one of the uh, areas of beliefs I don't know much about. Maybe you could tell me a bit about it. I would be happy to discuss the particulars uh, of the faith and perhaps show you what the Sea Drake can offer. But. Hmm. As we say, uh, the tide is ebbing, and I must retire. Tomorrow, perhaps, will you be staying uh, in Cloven Bay? Or, wait, you were with the others, no? Oh, yes, yes, I was. Yes, I, was, I overheard your conversation. Then uh, perhaps we will see each other at Myrna Doom, and we can discuss the particulars of our faith in greater detail then. And That'd be great. Steps forward, yeah. he puts his hand on your shoulder and says, See, Drake has much to offer the faithful. <laughs> and kind of holds your that. eye contact a little longer than is uh, comfortable, lets you go. Abide. Uh, good evening to you. He turns, leaves, and then once he's, his uh, guards sort of go along with him. Um. For the rest of you guys, anything else you wish to do this evening? Or anything you wish Indeed. to discuss? Indeed. Uh, Ordak will lean back in his uh, chair and cross his arms as he watches that exchange with uh, the bard. He can't hear anything. But he, he leans over to Kira and says... Uh, do you have lip reading? I think I might. Actually, some of you guys do. I do. Give us a lip reading check. Let's see if you've heard. You missed a couple of words. In there, but you got the gist. Ninety-eight is uh, you get the gist of, of what was uh, said between them. Gotcha. Yeah, lean over to Kira and say, "Um, how did he get under your skin so quickly there? What business is it of his for what my father did or how I was named?" I could tell he was upsetting you, but uh, why? Why should you give him that much power over your mind? Uh, perhaps you should be prying into more of your secrets or your family uh, and then see what uh, happens uh, and see I how you to, feel. I would love to know my past more. She shakes her head uh, and goes back to nursing her drink. Well, don't be that way. Here, have some of mine. Uh, she looks as I have plenty. The rest of you guys, anything else you wish to do? Or discuss. No. I'm good. Okay. Uh, now, sitting down, um, what... Uh, Steve, as you're making your way back to the table, mm -hmm. um, would you give us one more uh, regional... Lower uh, regional, please. Lower regional... Lore Regional. Here you Holy go. shit. Nice. <laughs> awesome. So you're making, you know, you're, you're end up having to take a bit of a, a winding way. You had to really run to almost the far side of the, um, 
uh, of the uh, the bar room in order to get to uh, uh, this priest. On your way back, you pass by two, um, or you pass by a, a table where you, you sort of look down and you recognize uh, two of the faces that are there. Uh, it is a busy table. They seem to be well in their cups. The two people who are there uh, that you recognize are, uh, let's see here. I intentionally tried to not label things in a clever way this time. <laughs> <laughs> Got to start in the right foot, right? Do you actually have like real names on them? Uh, sorry, I actually have real names on them. Yeah, yeah, no, nothing uh, uh, stupid and clever. Uh, now, where is it here? There's two things I yeah. need. Alphabetize, too. Yep. Uh, this <laughs> I put a lot of work into this. All right, that and... It's all those tables. <laughs> it's all those tables, exactly. A lot of uh, PDF yeah. scans. You get your mind focused in that manner. Yes. I have 20, <laughs> exactly. 20 of them on my screen. It's amazing. <laughs> All right, so there are two faces that you recognize at that table. One of them is Sir Eldon Trove. Now, if the name sounds familiar, let me uh, just bring you over. You may remember that um, the Duchy of Cloven Bay. Again, I apologize for how I gotta try and fix those tonight. Those names are illegible. Cloven Bay, the Duchy of Cloven Bay, includes uh, Tower Cove, called uh, Myrna Doom, Winter Watch, and Ryden Glen. Uh, the Kingdom of Oakford is based around Oakford, and in the last ten years. Uh, the uh, Duchy of Cloven Bay has uh, fought a small war with uh, Oakford. The king uh, of uh, Oakford is uh, King Olin, Olin Trove. What uh, Steve, or uh, what uh, Bodan uh, sees there is Elden Trove. Elden Trove is one of the sons of uh, King uh, Olin. Sitting next to him is Lady Eustace Trove. Also known as uh, the bastard daughter of King Trove. She is actually a bastard, but she has been given uh, Trove's name anyway. Uh, she is older uh, than Elden. Uh, hold on, no, she isn't. She's younger than uh, Elden, but she seems to be the favored of uh, Trove's things. The reason that's important uh, is because you know um, at the many of the tournaments and um, Grand Melees and whatnot that sort of make up some the summertime events in the region, Sir Kiera has thoroughly and utterly humiliated Sir Eldon and uh, has made an enemy of Lady Eustace. So, if they see each other, it is very likely to, um, uh, to result in uh, maybe not bloodshed in here, but is definitely going to uh, give an excuse for, uh, or it definitely would lead to a confrontation of some kind. And if she's upset right now, again, Sir Kiera's not uh, one to shrink from a threat. So in the mood that she's currently in, this may lead to um, a violent encounter. Now, uh, Nim Rice, you would be aware of who these people are as well, too, just for in your general idea. And uh, Zortodak, I don't think you would have known the particulars of, of this has all happened while you were studying at Eidolon. Yeah, and the, uh, the goings on of the uh, the noble families and their fancy sword shows is not one of my interests. Okay. So. <laughs> not yet, anyway. <laughs> All right, so then, what do you guys... Uh, oh, Steve, are you there, or are you uh, gone? 
See if he's gone. So assume that Bodan yeah. will mention this to uh, Nimrice, because you guys travel together as well too. If he mentions that to you, that the um, uh, that the two two of the offspring of uh, King Olin are elsewhere in the bar, what would you do about that? And I think he tells you quietly as well. He kind of brings you in like. Yeah. I'm trying to decide. I think. I think it might be best if we were to make our way out of here tonight. If we're if we're not going to stay here in a room, I think we should perhaps try to surreptitiously make our way out of here. Wasn't the the plan to stay the night and leave in the morning? Yeah, plan is to stay at the at the obelisk. Then let's try and get to our rooms in some sort of I don't know passive manner, for lack of a better word. Well, I have ways of uh, masking presences of people and myself. Is that what you prefer? I mean, that's not the worst idea in the world, especially as it pertains to Sir Kira. But would she be willing to uh, flee? Well, it's not fleeing, it's merely retiring. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe we can simply suggest she, uh, or we all retire early. And uh, yes, I glance at Jawar. Maybe cause a distraction so their eyes are averted elsewhere while we move to retire. So as you guys are discussing this, you realize that something or someone has walked up to the end of the table and is standing next to Sir Kira. Oh, hell. And that is Udu, oh. the, this strange thing. And mm. from where she's sitting, it's about the same, almost the uh, same height as her. And he seems to be looking at her and she looks down and seems a little confused at first and says, yes. And he puts his hand out and says, uh, in a odd voice, uh, Goin. She kind of looks at you guys like, what? what's going on here? Ordak is just fascinated. He's staring at the thing and is like, it speaks. Is it, is it the common language? It's the common Jamiri. So there is a different... Um, the, I think it's called uh, Tela is the common language uh, in uh, Jamin. In the, this continent, there's uh, one called uh, Rayara. Rayara, that's the common tongue in Jimmer. Yeah, that's the tongue. Yeah. It's it's fairly accented, uh, but it's definitely. Right. And you can't okay. place, you can't quite place where the accent is from either. His little mm -hmm. palm has the same bluish quality that his uh, snout does as well. Kara kind of looks and then reaches in, draws out a coin and places it in his hand and it, his hand snaps up, closes and he um, kind of hops up <laughs> onto the table and sits down, uh, pretty much facing her. Then takes the coin and spins uh, the coin. It's catching the light that uh, comes from the uh, torches, or the uh, lanterns, I should say, that uh, line the walls, the candles from the candelabras overhead. And he says, Once, six brothers. And the coin kind of replicates out into six things that fall into his hands, and he places them down. The coin, the coinage in here, uh, in this region, largely follows the same, um, like the the uh, coins that are minted during the uh, time of Ulashak. So it's a, you know, a, a silver drake uh, that uh, Sir Kira gave. But what goes to the ground, and he spreads it out, is one coin from each of the fallen realms. Six brothers. 
The wyvern. And he pushes a coin that has a wyvern on it. In the hills. The griffin. And he pushes it forward. There is a griffin coin from long lost Zor. High above plains. The unicorn. And he pushes a unicorn coin forward as well, too. Minted by the elves of Urolan. The Pegasus. High in its mountains. And there is a coin from long lost Tanara. The Phoenix burning in the south. Pushes forward a coin from Rakan. And... In the dark of the ocean. It pushes a coin forward. And it is the same uh, Lusha, Ulashak uh, Silver Drake that she gave him. Each friends, each strong in its home. Then, and he sort of gestures, the white wizard came. The white wizard told the griffin, or the white wizard, gave a gift when he gestures and it's a marble that appears in his hand and he rolls it forward so it goes doop, just up on the le- like the lip around the coin and rests in the middle gift to the griffin and only then learned when he opened it that it burned with brilliant light. And the griffin tried to fly, but his feathers and his beak and his claws burned. And it disappears into his hand. The wyvern thought himself brave, told by the wizard. Stand against your enemy. And when that enemy came, the griffon's head was split and his heels burned. And with a wave of his hand, the wyvern coin is gone. The unicorn saw this and fled cowering into his forests. And soon, he spins it, it kind of spins around on the tip of his thumb. The unicorn disappeared. And with a gesture, it's gone, and all you see is that blue palm. Never to be seen again. Seeing his brothers burned, and cloven and hidden Pegasus hid in his mountains where he withered and died and with a gesture he makes the Pegasus coin disappear the sea drake fearful turned to the white wizard and said, What can I do? And the wizard says, Take care. Your enemies come from behind you. And so Drake turned and seeing a mighty tail, beat it, tearing and falling into the water. Only then did he know it was his own tail he was tricked to bite. That one disappears. And so Brother Phoenix only remains told to burn bright by the white wizard so bright lighting the waters of the drake lighting the hills of the wyvern 
and singeing the f forests of the unicorn. Only he remains. But one brother is clever and tough. And though falling into the dark of the seas, those are the sea drakes home. And so clever drake he is. Spins uh, the phoenix coin up in the air. Then when he catches it and opens his hand, there is a pristine and flawless uh, silver drake. He places it down in front of Sir Kiera. And so, though he then, the sea drake remains sturdy and hidden. So he pushes the coin towards her, hops off the, the table, he nods, and then holds up the coin that she gave him. Thank you. He turns and waddles back into the crowd. I'd have given him a gold one for that. That was awesome. Uh, so coinage is, remember, is quite different. Gold is very, very expensive. I know. Yeah, okay. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so with that bizarre interruption, he then goes back and joins his, um, his companion, the navigator, and then doesn't seem to say, like, he doesn't give you guys any further mind. Sir Kiera is sort of staring at this coin. Um, what do you guys do? There was some discussion of going to, to bed there. Um, if you're look, keeping an eye out, Jawar, because uh, you're standing, it's probably easier to see. The two Trove children are still there. That's yeah, I mean, I think we'd like to sort of sneak out of there. Okay. Tell me how you want to uh, how you want to get uh, Sir Kira out of here. She's not. Um, uh, she's definitely not going to be like in a mood to pick a fight. It seems right now, but she's pro she's not the type to shrink from <clears throat> you know um, from any kind of confrontation. Uh, it's also um, if you did cast this spell, right? Spell magic is not uncommon in in this world. It wouldn't be unthinkable. People are like, oh, what happened? What happened? It just, you know, if you made her invisible, imagine being invisible and then trying to make your way safely across a packed bar. Yeah. While wearing plate armor as well. Uh, oh, I think that's right. Yeah, she has a good point. Well, uh, Jawar, you were thinking you were going to cause a distraction of some kind? I mean, I could. He did it so well with the priests. Yeah. I could just go make a scene by their table. I mean, I don't. I was gonna say, I could turn into a wolf and go over there and be annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Trust I mean, me, I jump up on their table, start eating something, look out. <laughs> yeah, but they may draw swords and like. I don't know that we necessarily want this to lead to us getting cut either, right? Like, that's, that's well, nobody in here, aside from my brothers, really knows that I can turn into a wolf. No, no, but if a wolf jumped on my table and I was either of these two looking murderous bastards, I would be stabbing it, right? Like... Oh, but you underestimate the speed. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to go for it... I mean, Jawar's not stopping hey, I'm you. Just, I... I'm just throwing out suggestions. <laughs> no, totally. And I'm saying go for it. It's exciting, but... <laughs> I'd be ready to get a blade in the gut. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he is pretty fast, based on what I can read. Yeah, but do you think our uh, half brother would appreciate that? Causing I don't know. I think he kind of likes. <laughs> I think he kind of <laughs> likes the rowdy nature. I could well, be wrong. He has been running a bar for two hundred years, right? I did kind of grow up here, at least in my early days. 
this is the kind of shenanigans that just freaking happens. Yeah. You may not have been aware of that, Ordak, but uh, Nim Rice spent his formative years uh, with um, uh, basically uh, being with uh, Vartalon being his father. Oh. Well, I've heard many stories from uh, Nim Rice, but uh, his rambunctious days were not one of them. He would not have uh, done well to encourage me. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you mean? Is that what you'd like to do? Is just... Uh, you do know Research, that yeah. they, uh, they tend to, like, they are armed uh, and they do act <laughs> They do uh, tend to respond with violence. The the uh, both of them, um, sir. Uh, the um, son is a bit of a, just a brute and a bully. Um, she's a genuine uh, lady. Eustace is a genuine psychopath. Oh, nice. Yeah, Sweet. I like her already. <laughs> yeah, give her a wink. So yeah, what do you think? Right. <laughs> run over there and lick her on the face <laughs> <laughs> I have a better idea go ahead let's order them so many drinks they get drunk and pass out let's have a drinking contest. not the world's worst idea yeah are they would you not expect they would ask who the drinks are from yeah I mean <clears throat> hmm Mm. Like if all you want to do, I don't want to overcomplicate this for you guys. If uh, all you want to do is try and use, uh, have Jawar do something similar to what uh, happened before, it's often the same uh, region where the Sea Drake um, uh, uh, priests were. Uh, Jawar, you could easily, you know, <laughs> depending on how your role goes, it could very well be the same fucking guy who falls into the table again. Right. The same poor drunkard that <laughs> I already sort of trip and just. I mean, I think that's all. That's all we need is a moment of their time being distracted to, you know, get Lady Kara sure. out of here. We're not talking about like sneaking her right past them or anything. So. When your yeah, so. appearance would not draw attention to them whatsoever, that no one is aware that there's a uh, Changramai uh, monk, you know, here. And there actually are, like you've you've seen, there are some Yakin. Uh, Jawar's ethnicity is mm -hmm. Yakin. And uh, there are other Yakin uh, people who live in, in Cloven Bay. So it, it, your skin tone would not, uh, you know, draw attention either. Or, you know, Bowden could always go over there and regale them with some story. Yep. Let's see here. Oh, did we lose Jeff? No, this roll 20 has been a little weird. It has. It has been yeah. odd tonight. I think Jeff might have frozen up there. Hold on. Yeah. Jeff in. I wonder how they would Yeah, he dropped out of the, the hangout too. Oh, he's back. Okay, good. Really crashed. That was weird. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Jeff, why don't you give us a... Oh, sorry. Uh, I was just going to add a little scene. That's just what he was going to say. Uh, he just says to uh, Ordak, save your coin. And he looks at Nemesis and save your tricks. I've got this. And okay. he'll go and try and make us sure. same kind of distraction. Yeah, give us, I think, another trickery uh, check, please. Burn all the oh, no, nice. Mind. So what do, you, what do you think happens that, to distract those two? Um, I think it's something very similar. Um, but I, this time maybe I get sort of the 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 barmaid or something involved and sort of like you know something happens where she spills their drink and so that way she can just you know oh sorry wipe it up and yeah. maybe offer she, them a fresh one or something you know what if you sort of like uh, you you tap one guy like just you kind of hit his knee as he's stepping and he steps just a little off uh, balance so that when he hits he stumbles and hits the barmaid the barmaid sort of knocks you know uh, a drink uh, or a tray of drinks that she was having onto their table and they're yeah. all like oh come on and jump yeah. up and put back which gives you enough time for all of you to make your way up now i'm picturing uh that there is um you guys will each have well sir kira will have her own quarters for sure and then maybe you guys will double up uh, for the rest of you I can sleep in very small spaces, so yep. wherever. Yeah, I was going to say, Nimrice doesn't even necessarily have to stay inside. Yeah. 
So if you guys want, you can have uh, like Bodan and Jawar uh, sharing one room, and then uh, Zartodak and uh, Nimrais in your animal form sleeping. There'll be a little hearth in there. Sounds like a good idea, that's, and we can exchange yeah, stories. That's a good idea. Okay. So, you guys get yourself settled in. Uh, you are right next to where Sir Kira is, so you don't need to worry about that. As you get yourself settled in, in your room, you can hear the sound of the pounding rain outside. Uh, the um, Bay of Ulor can be unforgiving, uh, even in the summertime. So, it seems as if the um, the Lady Fair, the airship that brought you here, seems to it may have just br uh, beaten the uh, inclement weather uh, that seems to have come in. Um, what do we have? Nemrice, Jawar, Zart Ordak, and Bodan each give us a perception check, please. Mm hmm. Let's see who rolls best here. Come on. Oh, finally. Ah. Nice. Okay. Get in there. Get, get so you guys are dead asleep. Or were oh, dead asleep. Good. Nice. Good rolls from everybody. Well, I was going to say, um, Jawar would probably take his the blanket off the bed that he's got and he would um go and lay on the floor right by the door so that he could hear anyone sure in the hallway or moving in towards sir kara's room okay so you are, are sleeping there right near the door when you're awoken by the sound of i'm picturing you being like you know maybe uh like a foot away from where the door is where the door would open Right, enough that I wouldn't be in the way to open the door. Yeah, yeah, so you're head down. So maybe it would be about uh, three feet then, because to safely open the door and not get you hit. Yeah. Um, you hear the sound of... Uh, actually, let me switch up. Oh, we're not in Happy Town no more. We go back to our... There we go. So... You are awakened by the sound. You hear kind of like a... The sound of something scraping across the floor. Like, and you open your eyes. And you can't quite see. Do you think you would have left the windows, like the, the curtains open, try and let some light in? Or would you be having the curtains closed so it would be in pitch blackness? I wouldn't, I wouldn't have worried about that. That would have been whatever, whoever I'm sharing a room with, I guess. Yeah, Bodan. Bodan would have probably... You're on the second floor as well. Would Bodan close the blinds, Steve? Uh, I'd, I'd be delighted. No, would you have done it? Would you leave some oh, light in the room, or would you close them, make it dark? Hmm. I guess that I, you know, I, I would close them, make, thanks for asking, make it dark, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. So it'd be pitch black, then. So you Honestly. could... Um, there probably is, um, you know, long... Uh, thing like long matches or something i'm assuming your character would have thought about like if you needed to get up and get out uh there is no light coming from the hallway um so what do you do jawar something seems to have scraped across the floor right near your face inside the room inside the room yeah almost as if someone it sounds like someone may have like slid something under the door um, I think he would probably jump to his feet and, you know, wherever the nearest little lantern is or something that would have been... Uh, uh, probably a, a candle. You know, or so a you candle, yeah. Light a match, candle, yeah. and you light that up. Uh, then with the lighting of the candle, I think Bodan uh, and Nimrice are both uh, sort of stirred, so the wolf uh, gets up and Bodan looks up from the bed and what you can see, Jawar, as you make your way over, there's a little... Um, I guess there wouldn't be a line because it's not like it's dirty or anything, but someone has slid something under the door. And it is a single silver drink. A coin. Well, mm. You pick this up and... It's... It may be the old, I mean, th this is the coin of the realm, uh, you know, that, that you guys would normally spend here. It may very well be the same one that Sir Kira paid to uh, Udu. What do you do? 
like what kind of time has passed since the coin was under the door before I can sort of tell it's a coin? Maybe a minute or so. Enough time for you to hop up, light the, the candle, turn around, and you can see the coin sitting there on the floor. Um, I guess I would open the door and check the hallway. Okay. I mean, I'm not expecting to see anyone still there, but... Are you trying to be quiet at all, or are you just are you speed more the... Probably speed more than silence. So as you, you throw the door open, the light of your candle dances because there is a wind playing its way down the hallway. At the far end of the hall, the window is open, allowing access to the wind and gale from outside. And Rice, I'm assuming you're up right now. Your brother is still asleep and Bodan is awake. And Jawar, as you, uh, the next thing you notice is looking down, there are wet footprints on the ground. <clears throat> and they look like bare footprints, the size of an adult human. And they seem to be heading in that direction of Sir Kiera's room. Oh, well, then I would immediately um, move to her door. Okay. So you immediately start moving towards her door, and I think the the, um, the light of the candle probably only extends about maybe like 5, 10 feet. Yeah. And that's when you see, as you approach, standing in front of her door... Oh, one second here. There we go. Is this man? Bare shirt, mm. slick with rain a bluish tinge to his skin, eyes that have uh, lost any, uh, they seem to be like completely can, um, uh, concealed by a cataract. And uh, he does not have two weapons in his hand, but he does have one sword in his hand and a dagger at his belt. And his, uh, he is not wearing boots either. He is barefooted. His thin gray or uh, whitish hair hanging limp, wet against him as if he had just come in from the cold. And you can see around his neck, there is not a wolf medallion there. There is a multi-starred shuriken. Mm. And several others hang from his belt. And that is... Oh, and then Nimrice barks to get yes. Zartor Dak jumps up. That is where we will leave our session, guys. And we'll see what happens next on Friday. So, for those listening at home, thank you so much for joining us for session two or chapter two of our Heirs of Sea and Sorrow campaign as is always the case. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns regarding the game we're playing um, the or the session or our campaign, please don't hesitate to uh, leave us a comment in the comment section down below, and I'll endeavor to reply in a timely fashion. In addition, you can find me on Twitter at Dungeon Musings, and you can find me by email. My email address is dungeonmusings at gmail.com. You can also find a, a link down below to uh, the Dungeon Musings Discord server. Uh, that's where, where we have uh, channels dedicated to most of the games we run on the channel, as well as most campaigns. We don't have a Rollmaster channel yet, but uh, that may be forthcoming. And um, we also, um, oh, there's a link down below to something called Heroes Save Villages, but apparently that link is not, or the donation link is not working right now. Our uh, channel uh, benefits the, uh, has a charity initiative to benefit the SOS Children's Villages International Charity, but unfortunately the, they seem to have changed their 
uh, donations or the way they're processing their donations. So we need to uh, get that sorted out. Um, uh, so I will, you can find on any of our other videos information about the SOS Children's Villages International Charity and uh, ways to donate. And I will be updating that shortly. Um, last thing I will say is, because we're over time right now too, a huge thank you to our awesome players. So Will, Jeffrey, John, and Steve-O, thank you so much for playing today, guys. I had a lot of fun today. I cannot wait for a monk on monk fight on Friday. Yes. <laughs> it so, will not be an honorable monk fight. Monk action. <laughs> <laughs> for those listening at home, thank you again for joining us. Uh, if you're joining us, uh, well, first off, we hope that we've given you a few hours to take your mind off of the troubles of our world and think about that our heroes in the Duchy of Cloven Bay have uh, gotten up to. Um, we hope that. Uh, uh, this finds you healthy, safe, and weathering the current crisis as well as can be expected. And until we see you again, stay safe, stay healthy, and happy gaming.